Sounds like the nearby ground is fertile. The village would gladly pay its taxes in grain and vegetables with the expe expectation that a squad of soldiers would provide additional protection. Our youth is young and strong, she claims proudly, so we don't need your guards in our walls. But, the, but a lone board road warden won't keep the roads passable. We need fighters willing to patrol the paths, maybe even up the heart of the woods. That is what we expect in return. You're not, you're not an expert when it comes to the linen, linen and cheese and wool, so the mayor sounds, spends a good couple of minutes describing the outstanding quality of what the village has to offer, especially the clothes, which you are meant to be as unique as those made by a master, Crip Crispus. You vaguely recognize the name of this tailor, Shoemaker, but you've never heard it earned enough to pay him for such as much as a single sleeve. And of course, we will never reject some steel and bronze. We lacked alloys for, sick for sickles and scythes. Then she repeats to her question, staring about a trade road. Truth be told, the guild is not sure what to be paid. What the, the peninsula has to offer, it's going to take them more time than our youth to convince them. Understandable. But you won't find in the other tribes they barely have enough to survive, even after the trade or for our crops. But we have only decent soil in this realm. At least the people of Gale Rocks have salt and barrels of fish, while the creeks sell meat and wood. Actually, if you don't, if you haven't been in the creeks yet, the farthest village from the northeast. You could give them a chance. She nods with a smile. They could use your help with keeping their roads safe. White marshes, on the other hand, as well as old Pego, Pegos, are close to worthless. For a trade route, that, that is. She clears her throat. She clears her throat. After, after these words, she stands up, walks to another table, and offers her trencher to an elderly man who sits there by himself with a trembling voice. He thanks her, then starts to chew on the so soggy bread. She sits down, wipes her hand into a clean cloth, adjusts the just the folds of her cape, and once again crosses her legs, so tell me, Leto, how is Holloway? I haven't gathered much news since the invasion. Things stay humble, but are starting to look brighter. The harbor is full of life, and the kids grow strong. I was hoping to hear that. She smiles with, sh with, with shines with kindness. Her smile shines with kindness. I thought they were done for, losing all their ships and getting cut off from so many tribes. I'm surprised the soldiers didn't butcher all their priests and traitors to fill their stomachs. I felt the unavoidable that, that I even came back home, afraid of for my own life. But I still carry memories of that place. Most of them will. I'm glad others haven't given up. Her smile fades away, and she speaks without you looking into your, into your direction, giving you a moment to rest. The first time I crossed those city walls with, and saw the streets, my soul saw them as if they, they were dra of, made of dragon bones, not stone. All those people in the noise, the high house, and this life is happening all around me. Ugh. But after only two years collapse, for the first time in human memory, like burning dollhouses, she pauses the rest of her hand on your stomach. She pauses, rests her hand on your, her stomach, turns back to you. But don't let me drag drag you away from the duties. How can I help you, Lido? I'm looking for Astrid. She stares you in the eyes and turns toward Epona. Is your palfrey a mare? We have only two jacks and could use some mules. I'm looking for Astrid. I heard you, but he's not welcome here. Her voice is harsh. And I don't know where he went. We haven't burned him, or fought his awoken shell. Wherever he is, a long pause. It's not our problem. What are his wrongdoings? If you don't know, he failed and won't get a second chance. He was meant 
who has scored a Alec- a guild a guild that's a hard name a gilda a daughter of of mine to her be old in the gale rocks she was a great archeress and the road from here to the coast is not that dangerous when they saw a few goblins on the road Astra and ordered her to push through right through into their trap she touches her dear shape the buckle they got jumped like a bunch of wealthy pilgrims a road warden worth their gruel should know better than then he can fight up with a blade. But my girl, she never had a chance. She sighs, looking and looks at the gate. He disappeared soon after this pitiful attempt at apologizing to me. And we closed our doors behind him for good. I'll let you know if he ever tries to return. Any ideas where I can look from? She adjusts her cape annoyed with an annoyed shrug. Try asking for him in the north. He spent most of the time between the white marshes and gale rocks and the creeks. Here he wasn't that eager to share his plans. Did you ever find your daughter? For a few breaths, her green eyes seek in something into your face. Her words are careful yet hesitant. She's with the fog now. The goblins were after food, so they carried her shell away. One day she's going to charge at her walls, awoken and empty. Even though she was a bit marquise, her heart was strong and patient. She listened to people, was ready to help them, and to cry with them. I could tell you more stories, but what more? But the dead rest. Thanks for the I wonder back in all of them, did you spend time, any time in the backwood corner? It used to be this dark, dirty alley with muggers working and even in the daylight. I stared there with Octavia the Miller in exchange for doing chores for her. She had this small wooden hut. Since the war, even the soldiers have avoided that street. People say it's home for thugs. You wouldn't recognize it. Now, it's now a, respect- a respectable street with one of the fanciest inns in the city. The bat, the apple, and the bat, and the boar. You describe how the family of Southerners have started a large shipyard right next to the alley, working on exotic folks in unusual shapes. Needing hands to work, they offered food and coins for many local thugs, and in time more light and stalls showed up in the alley. As you describe the new inn, Thalias burns to the cheerful laughter. So it's the family that ran into the forehead inn, then to think that I dared to doubt the old lady's endurance. People like to brave enough to, to bear the toil, toil the world, and going on to bring salvation to all of us. What would what what would it take to make you consider joining Halloween? Ah, I can consi- consider it right now. While she laughs, her eyes remaining keen. But if you want me to give some answers, let's see. She looks up to the right periodically. Raising her hand to her chin, some chesters of goodwill would be a great start. Since you are the guild's messenger, I need you to know that you can be relied on. She gives you a wide, a wide white grin, and that's only the first step, I assume. Of course. Do you even think the power to handle tax negotiations? She scoffs loudly at your handshake, at your head shake. Do enough for my village, and I'll hand over you. Uh, I'll hand you over a beautiful signed letter, a list of things my neighbors are looking for as well, as what they can give in return. Your superiors are going to see more than enough prepared for their offer. She rubs her hands together. I think that's fair. Yeah, it's like we're in agreement. Perfect. One more thing. So she puts her elbows on the table, leaning closer to you. You go behind my back. I'm not going to wait for a dagger. I'll end you first. She rests her chin against her, her open palms, giving you a disarmingly warm smile. I'm sure some people would know that we have a new 
road warden. Maybe I maybe ask around, see if anyone needs your help. More than my neighbors trust trust you and need you. More and the more willing they'll be to offer you better pay. Well, let's start here. What can I do for you? Oh, that's so kind, yeah, to ask. But before I ask you to run, let's see how long you can walk, shall we? Hang on. Just uh, get a quick drink. Her eyes wander to the left and right, and she gestures for a nearby guard to move away. He nods and gestures at a few other stalls to follow him. While the few locals cast curious looks at you, they turn away as, quick, as quickly as you notice them. The mare's shiny green eyes are still locked on you, and her voice is quite to a quiet to a whisper. Since Asterin's disappearance, there's little trade on the roads, and not much news has reached us, so be kind. Her fertilious tone distracts you, with how obviously fake it is. And help me learn some the same interesting tales about our neighbors. I smile back at her. You mean you mean one you mean ones that weren't meant to reach you. See, I knew deep down you were a true sage, she titters and straightens up, adjusting her cape without hassle. Do you have something to share? The squad that made camp in the south. Crossroads, now nothing more than two people. They plan to return to Holovan before fall. Since they cleared the camp of brigands, they went so quiet. I almost forgot about them. She rubbed her chin with them. I'm surprised they managed to stay alive till all till this day. Sending such a inexperienced group. Who shows that little officials misjudge this land? That's all I have to say. Tell me more. Tell me, how do people there dress in the city these days? Is it similar to what we have here before the war? The merchants were wearing those long dresses and robes, way too long for my taste. They got mud stains after every rainy day, and I see no more reason to keep shoes completely hidden. Not anymore. It's a shortage of fabric. A bunch of people wear tunics, like in the old days. At least we can hope that visitors arrive. We don't stand up much, she laughs, but also adjusts her dress, drawing her attention to its superb, superb quality. And who knows, maybe our little village is going to those unfortunate clothes. I'm sure we could spare a couple of sheets of fabrics. I was in the pelt of the north. The innkeeper feels uneasy about Galcia's band. When you mention it, raids of the northern villages, her eyes narrow. Are you sure? It's the first I've heard about Galcia. Has it been around since years back then? She's not... But she's not much of a nuisance. I'm, I'm a messenger. He's asking for you to join forces with him. Well, I can't give you my answer. I won't go... I won't ask our hunters to endanger their lives in pursuit of this... some gossip. I don't have time for this. I should tell the innkeeper you're not interested in unfriendly collaboration. She raises her chin. I guess you should. Have you heard of the necromancers to the north? She taps her fingers on the table. Yes, I have. After you, after you ask her to tell more, tell you more, she seems to regain confidence. You mean the white marshals for sure? I don't know all that much about what's happening over there. We avoid their lands if we can. She frowns. I shouldn't gossip about it, strangers. We can talk about it in another location. What do you think about the scavenger who was there before? Ah, he's still alive. She says, but despite, he brought us some news from the north and paid off his debt to us. But he's an idler, a, a peddler, drinks too. The farther away he stays from here, the better. I was in the ruined village south of here. Her tense gaze shifts into you, awkward click of her tongue. As she lends, leans away from you, I don't even want to think about what, about 
about their tragic fate. No one can negotiate with the rape of this long pause. And I better not I better not find you upsetting my neighbors with these sad questions. It was a challenging time for all of us, a wound we won't forget. You seem to be fairly off, even more so than the other people in the village. What's your secret? She reaches for her buckle and her voice growls cold. There is no secret, Traveler. There's no hard work, risk, and sacrifice in the support of those who care about me. Good things that happen to me shine on my people just as much as I think about it. Before you mention it again, she adjusts her key. It's all weird tree from here. One, the one with the altar standing in front of it. She strains up razors in the chin. You mean the... You mean Beholder, the guardian spirit of our wetlands. Every fall we bring it gifts in return. It provides us with blessed fruit. The flesh of the forest, she stares into your eyes. It's older than the oldest books, the oldest spots. The druids help us honor its secret. It shows how, how to ask its help. Neither of these rituals, she scoffs, would be good use for you. I did kind of just chop it off chopped off a piece of it. Do you need assistance? First, I need you to be, I need to be sure that you can handle yourself. Bring me some juicy rumors, won't you? Maybe talk with my neighbors. We can use a few coins or something. Or some, someone with a steady hand. Thank you for your time. Hmm. Your tolerance of Ape L in. So the tal Alkius, traitor. The man behind the counter is expecting a stack of white flour, mumbling to himself and patiently cursing. The other locals walk away, giving you space to trade in peace. Weevils! He points to the little dark blue insect that's trying to flee. Ship me fire! Twas of, twas of ground. A few days ago, nay pies for us tomorrow. Looks like... He puts the sack on the ground. I'll take care of it later, Road Warden A. Even the mayor cared enough to see you and kids are lining up to look at you and at your horse. Strangers are like ghosts to them now. He's wearing a simple brown robe with no hood. A rope instead of a belt and a modest trim made of green thread. It barely reaches below his knees, revealing his sandals and crude pants made of linen. At the same time, it's way too large for him, and it hangs from him like a bag. He looks like a poor vendor from Hollow. He stands with you. He stands to you with legs crossed, leaning on the counter with one hand and keeping the other one on his hip. He's around 40 short and a bit greasy with a humble beard and hair. His fingers are unusually long. Playful. Are you a barrel collector, or do you sell them? He observes you in silence, then pretends to yawn. Brilliant, as far as I care. You can leave your porch and bugger off. I help my neighbors sell what they have, have in abundance, or divide things to one of workers, builders, and travelers. If you want something, let's go. Let's get to it. Name's Arceus. I bring goods to sell. He gestures for you to gather your things. This junk does not interest me. We're looking for what we can to make ourselves like iron or enchanted items. Next time, maybe. Do you need help? I could use a job. No what? No what? He's something urgent. I need medicam for my mom and daughter. My daughter. Me that she's hurt or anything. She raises he raises her up in palms as if to show that he's not holding a knife. She's a teen. She wants to start hunting in the woods. I can teach her I can may teach her not much. 
but I'd sleep better knowing that she had a healing book. You have... Oh, you have... He hesitates. Almost nine days. Bring me the potion before the last dust. I'll pay for you five dragons. A strong luster would be more worth more than five points. Well, now tis all I can pay. He spreads his arm. I do not sculpt with stupid dragons. With you and this stupid... With you. I do not... I do need sculpt you, stupid. The dragons I get here belong to the village. Five is bad. Hey, and I'll mention the neighbors will help He takes a deep breath of his own sweat. I can think of two places. Safer the old Pegos on the mountain of the crazy monks. Crazy and boring, more than, more boring than the Moflon, but often brewed with Penelope. You can also head south from Crossroads, behind the belt of the north. I've been there myself, myself. But you'll find a dome in there, as old as the city. And this, he reaches for his clicking pouch. He pulls out a massive iron key. It is meant to open a secret passage there. She didn't want you to take the stall after all. How do you know about that secret? From the merchant. She's from the hag. It was I was meant to pass the key to her friend, but he never showed up. Fine, I'll look for it. About the potion. Well, yeah, I do have a potion. I'm just gonna give it to him. I have no use for it now, to be honest. With a grin, he picks up the bottle, gently jiggles it, and, we and weighs it in his hands, and puts it on the counter. Great, now let's hope my little girl will need to get herself swallowed by a dragon. So he said five rings. It's yours. He smiles and looks for the coins in a large house. Oh, th thanks. Oh, to bring out good news. I take my reward. Eh? I don't need any furniture or barrels. Do you have anything of use for a traveler? This is hard to say. Travel. What, what do travelers need? He clears his throat, turns away, and looks at his sword. While some of his crates and barrels are empty, they carry an assortment of odds and ends. Tools made of wood and stone, pots, mugs, seeds, vegetables, fabric. It takes him a few minutes to look through the wares. He puts three packages on the countertop. He unwraps the first one. He recognizes it's sharp. It's, you recognize what it is by shape alone. By the shape alone. Tell me about this beauty. He chuckles and lets you hold it. A shiny battle axe. The haft is long, but the head is light. I know you're fi what you're thinking. Your eyes stare, and he praises the weapon loudly. The barrel listens. You barely, but you barely listen. Oh, you see your reflection in the unused blade, as sharp as they get. You're not a smith, but you can see the spot. You, you see no, not a spot of rust. When you take a swing, it. When you take a swing, it. It takes hardly any effort. The leather straps holding the pieces together are just decoration, and the handle is as smooth as glass, and it perfectly fits in your hand. The man chuckles, do you like it, eh? I doubt you can afford it, but no worries. That's not, that's not all I can have, that's all I have. His long fingers tap against the parchment windows of the lantern frame. Its frame is cheap, made of oak, tis glued, and tis quiet, he says. While shaking in it in the air, me as fancy as iron ones with oil, but you can carry it in case without luring the corpse eaters and the goblins. Perfect for a traveler. Take, just take a look. Inside the lantern, you find a place for a candle. Not, not a great match with people living in wooden houses. Hiding glue are knee easy to make, but I, but I, but will knee ask more than, than four rings? The last sack is a saddle with three hands, with and three hands in all. It contains a whole bunch of undyed linen sheets. We usually keep them for traders, but we can use a few dragon rings, and who knows if 
if there's ever going to be a next car caravan, gives you a long Interested? Depends what what you want it for. The new battle axe, but I want the lantern. Cause um, we're gonna say. What can you tell me about Asker? That Eva thought thought he was here no then no then once no more than once. Didn't he leave much behind? Smelly horde. He looks around and then spits on the ground. At least he bought, bought a blade from me. Are you sure what blade? What do you know? What blade it was? Sure, it was, it was a special one, a sickle sword with a tip wider than a when than twas a grip long as from fingertips to shoulder, a near sword, near knife, single edge. Brought his own steel to melt, to melt it for. What's it good for? Fencing. More than cutting bushes, creepers, roots. It it will need fell, fell a tree, but tis a fine tool. He nods the pa to a passerby, but his smile disappears as quickly as it had showed up. Pathfinders use it, use it. Ma, pa, have to. I have one as well. He chopped nuts with it. Nuts and mulch and mulch. So he took it into the wilderness. He shrugs pretty much anyway. There are hills from here, coasts and bogs in the north. The heart of the woods can help. Can he help with you with it? Nothing for now. I walk away. I leave the square. <laughs> I go to the local priest. Get south of the dead tree, in the main square before you, you get a second patch building, a large man stands up from a bench and gets into your way. He's close to 50, 50, taller than most people you've seen in your life, broad shouldered, his hair is short, hair is short, hair, his hair and short beard are brown, matching his elegant woolen robe, a thick Club is attached to his right waist with a leather strap. He left his sandals and by his sitting post. Many wants to speak speak with our guides and teachers. He speaks with a solemn, strong voice. But ye need ye welcome here. Turn back, stranger. I don't want any trouble. He shrugs. Travelers bring their own problems onto their knees. Nathan. Can I know why? I'm your new world warrior. Are you sure no soul here needs my assistance? His harsh, his harsh look softens. We can handle ourselves if, if that changes. Elpis will summon you. So it be. I turn back. At the point, the tailor. Follow the guard's direction and reach the light washed building standing up on the western bank next to the small garden of flowers and herbs it's well kept and clean with a plain bean front yard and the and parts covered by the sands through open windows you catch a glance of furniture made of smooth almost shiny wood and with hint, with hints of the dark cherry like red decorated with carvings of plants A woman in her 40s is sitting on a wooden bench and a table covered with fabrics, threads and needles made of bone and iron. She's sewing a long sleeve to what's going to become a blue tunic. Her movements are quick and confident. Brown wavy shoulder length hair is tied into a breath into a rape like braid. But other than Other than that, her four her her clothes are simple and inconspicuous. She doesn't have have a left leg, but you don't notice any pain. You observe for a few for a few movements until without sparing you much as glance as she encourages to speak with a bend. 
my canvas then needs some work. I take it off with few abrasions. The woman follows her finger patiently. I take from two to five dragon rings for fixing this jacket. But will me have any more from this one? To get truly strong for longer, I, I need it to be made up of better materials like spider silk. Let me think about it. Canvas in the champion. Two hours, parts of the thread will be replaced with spider silk. Your outfit needs no work. Could I. Could you answer a couple questions? The boredom in her voice is part of it. How. I'm. I'm Neobob. Good luck. I go through the main square. I approach Eryx, the innkeeper. Even though the counter stands outdoors, the run or dirty, it's no, it's not rotten or dirty. And you guess, like other furniture, it's brought inside every night. Eryx approaches you with a smile and leans his, and lean, and lean, and leans on its surface with his fist. He is poorly even polished. He's partial. He's poor, nah. He's poorly even and. He's portly and even taller than his neighbors, he, and he had got freckles, short and gray hair, and an elegant beard, his long woolen orange tunic as a decorative cut under the, under the neck, and loose braids at its edges. How can I help you, traveler? His accent is heavy, nothing like his wife's. He stomps with a heavy boot, looks around as if he was just waiting to get back on the other tracks. His fingers are still dirty from the weeding the garden. I could use a room. Sure thing. My kids are cleaner than you'd find in the city. Just tell me when you're ready. Nice. Wait, what? Do you have any food rations I can buy? Things to, things to worry about. Neighbors in their own company better for everyone to seek help from my wife or the poor speakers in need in a mug of ale. Have any interesting guests? I didn't know, know about I didn't know, know he scratches his beard. There was one big about, but he needed your long and did need too much. A timid fellow talks loudly, but is afraid of everything, especially the guards. His face is touched by flames, has a big ballista. He says this word with struggle, with strange accents working. In the large bird has a beast of burden. I didn't I did not know what he to say, he shrugs. He went south and most likely gone. Rumors, but maybe you've heard about someone who may need my help. You stay as if we expect travelers to get here any day, but I'll, I'll ask around and come tomorrow. Thanks. At least that's where I wait. Until evening. Go to the main square. Two dragon ball. You sleep. Your first sleep ends, but your usual one hour break is instantly disrupted by noise. You stand up, walk to the window, and see the reason for the commotion. A group of workers outside in of the inn drinking and laughing with Eric, the innkeeper, is also among them. You could join them, but you wouldn't but you won't get a good sleep tonight. After such a long day, you might end up exhausted. You just want to look. It's an opportunity to show I'm not an outsider. I can sacrifice a bit of sleep. Yeah, I can do that. Oh! I should have not done that. Oops. 
It's fine. You lose track of Prime Slaughter by smell so bold that ill. Cold roast lamb. The excuse for having this celebration. Recent version. The very same was occurring when you arrived at the village. The young mother is exhausted and is the first one to leave. But more than ten people stay poking at her partner with kind-hearted jokes. You says one next week the best you can, says one of them. Nay, sleep sleep for you after that. You may be a stranger, but your presence was is welcomed with joy. The small talk is just engaging engaging. As you expect from people who have already slept for three to four hours today. But there's something pleasant about them sharing their parenthood stories and and plans for the future. The humming howls creak and the lights in the dark make you feel like yeah, as if you belong here. And it's delightful illusion, especially in a group of strangers. At one point you asked about your they asked about your own journeys. You prefer to keep them mostly to yourself while the hunters encourage you strongly. Travel to the creeks, they're fun function. You see they love to meet new people. But be ready to wake up and with a spinning head. I'm one of the first to head back to bed. You spend the night in peace in a clean in a clean bed with a tightly shut window. Warm blanket in the morning, you find a stool placed by your bed, covered by a decent stew with white bread to dip. A decent stew with white bread to dip. Once you get dressed, you go downstairs, and young boy is covered in mud, speaks unusually loud, loud and enthusiastically, and mentions that opponents already started been brushed and watered. You nod, he runs outside without noticing. The innkeepers the innkeeper is sitting next near the door, from time to time, carrying out another bowl with either stew or cool. The is nowhere to be seen. Alright, I'm going to end the video here. I love you all. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.